Hey folks, these videos are meant to help you with the summer assignment. I've just made up some problems that are similar to what you have there, and you can watch as much or as little of this as you want. This first video is about scientific notation and unit conversions. Um, we have some numbers to convert into scientific notation and some numbers to convert into standard notation. Um, I'm going to talk, when I talk about scientific notation, uh, we do a lot of comparison with the number one. Uh, scientific notation is based on powers of 10, and 10 to the 0 power is 1. Um, so I'm going to talk about big and small numbers here relative to 1. So to put numbers in scientific notation, I decide whether the number is big or small based on how it compares to 1. So the number 2700 is big. I now need to make uh, a number in scientific notation that has a coefficient multiplied, I'm not going to use that color, multiplied by 10 to some power. The coefficient is going to be a number between 1 and 10. So in the number 2700, the decimal place would be, or decimal point would be here. To make a number uh, between 1 and 10, I would need to move the decimal place so it's between the 2 and the 7. So my coefficient is 2.7. My power of 10 is going to be the number of places that I moved the decimal point. Now, because this is a big number, it's going to be a positive power of 10. So this is going to be 2.7 times 10 to the positive 3. I don't play around with, like, move it to the left or the right if it's positive or negative because I get confused. So I just look and see if it's a big or a small number, and then I move the decimal place based on that. So I'm going to do this one next, the 0 0.015. That's a small number because it's smaller than 1. I need to move the decimal place until I get a number that's between 1 and 10, and so I'm going to get the number 1.5. Uh, this is going to be times 10 to a negative number because it is a small number, and I move the decimal point two places, so 1.5 times 10 to the negative 2. Great. Uh, next up, I have 3.9 times 10 to the 4th. Now this is a positive exponent, so that means I'm going to make a big number. Um, I'm going to start writing this number, and I'm going to move the decimal point in my head, and I'll do it verbally here. So 3.9 times 10 to the 4th becomes 3, and then 9. So that would be if I moved it one place. And I'm going to keep adding zeros until I get to 4. So this is move it one place, 2, 3, or 4 places. So the number is 39,000. Uh, which is 3.9 times 10 to the 4th. Okay. Uh, using a negative exponent is just a little bit trickier, not really that much different, but I have this number 9.0 times 10 to the negative 3rd. That negative exponent means it's a small number, and so I'm going to um, move the decimal point so that it becomes small. So I'm going to start by writing my last two digits, 9, 0. Now the decimal point was here, and I'm going to move it one this way, and then I'm at the front of the number. So I need to move it three times. So if I go one, I go two more, and then I put down the decimal point. So this number is 0 0.0090. Um, I've moved the decimal point three places to make a small number. Great. Uh, this next part is about unit conversions, and so we start off with metric, and then we go to non-metric. Now, a lot of you know your metric prefixes, and that's great. You don't need to watch this part of the video um, unless you want to see how I would do it in the using the reference sheet. Uh, so here we go. So on your AP Physics 1 equation sheet is going to be this table of metric prefixes and the factors that they represent. Uh, this is not going to be on your equation sheet. This is just some non-metric conversion factors that I selected. And then this information, a lot of it is going to be on your equation sheet as well to help you interpret units. Um, so here's how I would do this. If I'm converting mg to g, this is milligrams. Um, and so on this equation sheet, on this table, the prefix milli means 10 to the negative third. So what that means is 1 milligram is 10 to the negative third grams. Now, if you have memorized from your chemistry course that um, there's a thousand milligrams in a gram, that's the same exact thing. 
keep doing that. No need to adopt my system just because it's mine. Uh, but if you have not memorized your prefixes, uh, this is going to be pretty useful. So we set up some dimensional analysis to convert milligrams to grams. All I'm doing is changing the units. I'm not uh, changing the value of the number. So I'm going to multiply by uh, 10 to the negative third grams over 1 milligram. So this is a fraction that is equal to 1 that just has different units in the numerator and denominator. When I multiply through, the milligrams will cancel and I'll be left with grams. So I want to do 107 times 10 to the negative third over 1. Well, I just did scientific notation. So 107 times 10 to the negative third, I need to move the decimal point three places to make this number smaller, and it's 0 0.107 grams. So scientific notation can be very helpful here. All right, um, next up is 52m to cm. This is meters to centimeters. And so the, the table again, uh, so this time it says centi is 10 to the negative second. And so again, that means that one centimeter is 10 to the negative second meters. So I take 52 meters. And again, I set up dimensional analysis. This time I want to do one centimeter over 10 to the negative second meters. Um, this is not the same as the previous problem. This is not 52 times 10 to the negative second. This is 52 times 1 over 10 to the negative second. Um, and so if you know your, your fraction exponent rules, you know that this means 52 times 10 to the positive second. Uh, and so that's going to give me 5,200 centimeters. Uh, also, if you're still listening, um, if you know your metric conversions just based on moving the decimal point, that's going to be fine as well. The metric conversions in AP Physics 1 are not that complicated, um, so you should be fine with, with whatever system you have. All right, the next one is 4100 mg to kg. So this one's like a little bit crazier uh, because we have two units that are prefixed. So one milligram is 10 to the negative third grams, and one kilogram is 10 to the positive third grams. Um, and so again, that's just from the, the sheet there. So I can set up dimensional analysis, there's lots of ways to like write this down and you might find some like quicker ways to do it. I'm going to use both of these as conversion factors. So I'm going to convert milligrams to grams. So 10 to the negative third grams over one milligram. And then once I do that, the like milligrams have canceled and I'm left with grams. Um, the next step would be to convert this to kilograms. So one kilogram over 10 to the third grams. Um, and so again, if you want to break out your calculator at any point in time, that's fine. Um, you can also like manage your exponents and, and move the decimal place accordingly. Um, but basically I'm taking this small unit and converting it to a big unit. So all of this means that I'm basically going to need to move the decimal point six times to get the number of kilograms. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 0 0.0041 kilograms is what I have. Cool. All right. Um, okay. So um, if that was good, then we're moving on to some non-metric conversions. So the next one is miles to centimeters. Um, now this is... You know, you have some options when you have length measurements. Uh, I have boxed out these conversions between feet and miles and meters and miles. I can go in a number of different ways, but I'm going to use this one between miles and meters because I'm trying to get to centimeters and I can easily convert between meters and centimeters. So I'm going to take 0 0.167 miles. And I'm going to convert, and it's going to say 1,609 meters is equal to one mile. And then from my previous work, <clears throat> I know that one centimeter is 10 to the negative second meters. 
um, and so I can just do my dimensional analysis all at once. This time I'm just going to use a calculator, um, 0.167 times 1609 divided by 10 to the negative second power. And so this is 260 or 26,870 centimeters. All right, uh, last, next to last one, there's one more on the other page, uh, is a compound unit. So this one's meters per second to miles per hour. When you do compound units, you can always write them as a fraction like this. Uh, 22 meters per second is the same thing as saying an object travels 22 meters in one second. So you can split that uh, into a two-level fraction. The way that this works is you're essentially converting each unit on its own and then doing all of the math related to that. So if I take 22 meters per second, I can convert this to miles. I just did the la this on the last problem. So um, one mile is 1,609 meters. And so I want to like pause here and say, okay, well, this takes care of the meters conversion. Uh, I don't need to worry about that. I have miles. I have miles per second. So now I'm going to convert the seconds. And this is like harder to see if you haven't done this in a while or at all. Uh, one second is in the denominator. So seconds and hours. One hour, that's 60 minutes, and each minute has 60 seconds. That's 3,600 seconds. So I'm going to say 3,600 seconds per one hour. I set it up with seconds in the numerator because I'm trying to work with seconds in the denominator. So seconds are going to cancel uh, and hours will be left over. So I convert each unit on its own and I get the end result. So I do 22 divided by 1609 times 3,600. And so this gives me 49 miles per hour. All right. Um, and then you'll probably hear me say this in class a lot. To convert from meters per second to miles per hour, you double the meters per second, and then you like add a little bit. Um, if you divide these two out, you can see the actual conversion factor between meters per second and miles per hour. The last one for scientific notation and unit conversions is a squared unit. So sometimes we deal with uh, areas or volumes. And so the last thing is just going to be to deal with this. Um, this one's like a little bit crazier, but it's not too bad. So 250 inches squared. The deal with inches, deal with anything that's squared is that it's just like a compound unit. You have to convert each unit on its own, but there's a trick to it. So um, inches to meters. So one thing that I can get from that sheet is there are 2.54 centimeters in one inch. And here's the trick. If I'm converting square inches, I'm going to end up needing to get square centimeters. So I'm going to square this whole parentheses. I'm essentially converting inches twice. If you think of like a square, you have inches on each length and height, and what we're doing here is we're changing each of those out for centimeters. Um, and so if I square this conversion, then I'm actually taking care of the inches squared. I'm going to do the same thing to go from centimeters to meters, um, and so 10 to the negative second meters is one centimeter. Um, and I'm going to square it. So every conversion factor that I put in to this has to be squared because the inches themselves are squared. I have to be careful on the math here. So I'm going to do 250 times 2.54 squared. And then this one's a little crazy, times 10 to the negative second squared. Um, so just be careful like entering that one in your calculator. Uh, but this is going to end up being 0.16 square meters. Okay. Um, if that video was enough for you for the first two topics, just wait until uh, school starts up and you'll be able to ask as many questions as you need. Thanks.